This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build your business online. You ready for some cyborg action? So after making Iron Mouse and Silverwell, I thought it was time for a robotic boss babe. And who would be better for that than Zentrea? She's a cyborg VTuber from a post-apocalyptic future sent back in time to prevent the apocalypse. So let's try to prevent Doomsday a little more today and make her as a doll. The plan is to print the doll body, incorporate NeoPixel LED into the doll body hooked up to an Arduino, plus a screen in her visor for the signature look when she wears her helmet. I'm talking big here with no knowledge in wiring up LEDs, soldering, programming and a D in physics when I went to school, but I'm gonna make this work and if it's the last thing I'm gonna do. So how about we start with the easy part? Okay, so this project is tremendous, ginominous Horus, you might say. So while Blue Pixie is still sculpting on the body because that is a huge thing to do on this doll. I was so free to already print the head. So how about this time we start with the wig and the face up and the eyes. Let's do that. All right, as you can see, I already prepped some light gray yarn wrapped and a wig cap for Zen off cam so we can start the hot glue action right away. To make your signature short hair with long bangs, I start in the back of the head and glue the first layer of wefts all around the head from one ear to the other ear. It's easier to cut and style doll wigs as you go, so I cut of a chunk of the hair right away and shape it with some sharp scissors before taking my mini hair iron and flick them out. I pull them in place and secure them with some got to be hairspray adhesive if necessary. After then it's basically just continuing the same steps over and over again gluing wefts, cutting and styling while going through the monk phase of wig making. In this case Zen looked way too much like the grandpa from Viridian City. <laughs> but you just gotta trust the process here because with more hair added to it, it definitely started to look more and more like her. When the back of the head was filled up, I start working on her bangs the same way and point cut them for a feathery look. And to finish off the wig, I glue a weft on top of the bangs and then flip it towards the front, taming it down with heat and then cutting and styling it in place, before doing the same on the back side of the wig, gluing, cutting and styling the last weft of the wig in place, and we have Zen's wig already done. I'm really really happy how it turned out. Short wigs are always harder to make than long ones because you have to cut and style a lot more, but thanks to my hairdresser friend Chris's advice, I'm getting a hang of it slowly. <laughs> okay, so wig is done, let's paint her face. I primed the face with Mr. Super Clear already and first add some pink blushing on her cheeks to give her a sweet lively look. I almost forgot my micro glitters, how dare I? So I add a bit of them to give the skin a bit more of a glow because everything is better with glitter in your life, trust me. <laughs> After sealing her a second time with MSC, I can then finally start sketching out the eye lines. To make it look really close to the original design of Zen, I kept a printed photo of her face next to me while painting it. After I was happy with the sketch lines, I can then finally go in with some black acrylic paint and my nail art detail brushes to fill in the lines. This is honestly my favorite part of the face up because it gives the face so much life. Some people wonder how steady my hands are but the secret is to rest them on the doll head or on your other hand and to paint without thinking of ruining it. The less you try to make them look good the better they will turn out. Also your paint just needs the right amount of thickness. <laughs> when the lines were drawn I then used some dark brown pastel chalk dust to blend the lines in a bit. It makes the whole face look a lot softer. And then we can finally draw the eyebrows. Looking back at the footage I was surprised how I painted them in one brush stroke. Damn, I really had a run that day. <laughs> and then I just fill in her cute smirk with some white ink I borrowed from my white Pasca marker. Last but not least, we need more sprucklies, so I add my favorite iridescent micro glitter as a highlighter to her cheeks. You wanna add a bit more than you need because the sealant likes to tone down the glam a little again. After one final sealing, I then just need to add some gloss to her mouth and lower lash lines using my Liquitex high gloss varnish. And with that, the face up is done and we can now make her eyes. To make them, I created a little vector graphic for the iris in Adobe Illustrator, printed it and first cut it out perfectly round. Doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> then using my half sphere mold and the fourth biggest sphere, I take my UV resin and pour in some of it to the sphere. Then I take my tweezers and place the iris upside down on top of the resin and put it into my UV lamp for a couple minutes. And then it's time to demold. 
Yes, a perfect eye. Since the resin seeped a bit through the paper, however, I just paint the back white again with my Posca marker and then I just need to make a second eye the same way. And then with the magic of editing, I insert the eyes into Zen's face. Okay, wow, I absolutely adore her face. She looks already so, so much like her. Whoa! But now we have to face the biggest challenge for this project. The body. So actually this doll took so much time and effort to sculpt that Blue Pixie had to send me the pieces day by day because it took her a whopping 120 hours to sculpt this doll. But holy uh. shit, was it worth it? I mean, look at all those details. It's just nuts. Yeah. Thank you so much Blue for working on this together with me. Without you, I could have never made this doll. You are incredible. With the upper torso Blue sent to me first, I mixed some red resin that looks like forbidden strawberry sauce and set up my printer to print it. Yes, the file was called Zentrea Booba. My file naming is incredibly professional. <laughs> After a couple hours, the upper torso was done printing and it turned out incredible. Well, if these tatas don't prevent the apocalypse, I don't know what will. Well, maybe you can prevent Doomsday with a mind-blowing online presence. With today's sponsor Squarespace, you could possibly make a deep impact on that. With Squarespace, you can easily build your own website and shop with beautiful templates that guarantee a clean and professional look. Never accidentally blow up pictures again thanks to image blocks. Images will automatically be scaled in size to make sure they always look great, no matter how you place them in your content. Just drag and drop them into position. And you can even connect your social media accounts by just changing the links and icons. It's so easy. Amazing portfolio gallery designs will guarantee that your website looks super professional. And you can even make password protected areas for very special people. So if you're ready to change the world, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel to get 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website using my code moonlightjewel. That's squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel code Moonlight Jewel. Thank you again Squarespace for sponsoring this video and now let's get back into the cyborg action. <laughs> this mic is actually a telescope flashlight that I, <laughs> that I stole from my dad. Okay, so I had to fill up some little air bubbles and stuff and now I need to sand this whole piece before we can get to painting. So let's do that, that's gonna take forever. <laughs> If you're a crafty person as well, you probably know that sanding is the public enemy number one because it takes so insanely long but is so worth it in the end. With different grids of sandpaper, I sand down the whole upper torso piece until I am satisfied. Since the red of the resin was more of a gummy bear color, I decided to buy Tamiya spray paint in metallic red. I saw some results with it online and really wanted to try it. So I went into my dad's workshop to coat the whole piece with it and you can really see what a huge difference it makes and how pretty it looks. Now it just needs to dry for a bit and then it looked like this. And now the tedious part begins. I have to paint all the mechanical cyborg-y elements on the torso black. I thought this would probably not take too long, but boy was I wrong. I had to be super exact with all the lines and use the small brush to not accidentally overpaint the edges and it took forever. This is taking way longer than I anticipated. Oh god, I've been painting for one and a half hours already. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the end I needed about two hours to paint all the parts on the upper torso black and then added a teal stripe for the light on the neck piece as well. Since I can't place lights everywhere in the doll, I decided to cover all the painted teal parts with a mix of glow-in-the-dark pigment and UV resin. I'm gonna put this under a UV lamp and then come back with lights off and see if it glows. It doesn't show as much on cam, but it really glows and I think it's gonna be a really cool effect. This is how the upper torso looked all done and here I already printed the lower torso and sanded it and just look at the difference. Let's speed up the painting process on the lower torso a little since I can use some magic here to apply both the red metallic coating and the black paint on it. Great! Okay, so both torso pieces are painted now and Blue Pixie sent me the legs and they are printing right now. So let's check on them if they are already done. Nice. With the legs printed on both my Mars and Saturn printer simultaneously, I then wash and cure them and then we have to do the same old game here by sanding everything smooth. We have the lower legs in black, the knees and the thighs which are huge. 
To paint a few little spots red on the lower legs, I have to mask off the areas on them first until they looked like wrapped ice cream cones. After successfully painting the legs red alongside with my hands because I forgot to put on gloves, I can then remove the masking tape and end up with pretty metallic red parts. Before deepening the black of the legs, I decided to paint all the teal parts as well and use my teal Posca pen for that. This was oddly satisfying because the ink of the Posca marker has a great opacity and covered pretty much all spots needed immediately. Before glossing over the teal parts with glow in the dark resin mix, I decided to paint the black parts on the leg first with matte acrylic black paint. And then I take an old small brush and apply the glow in the dark resin mix to all the teal colored parts. And here with lights off you can see it also glows and almost looks radioactive. I feel glow in the dark stuff is becoming my new favorite thing. <laughs> Meanwhile my printer was printing more parts. Okay, these are the last pieces for the doll, except for the helmet. And I'm going to get these off the supports now and clean them up and yeah, then also paint them. <laughs> you ready for some crunchy support removal ASMR? Okay, that is the progress so far. I already covered these with red paint and I sanded everything and then everything can be painted. This can be painted, the rest on the arms can be painted and then I hope everything is done so we can assemble and install the LED somehow. I have no idea yet how. <laughs> so yeah, with the arms printed completely, I begin painting these as well. I wonder why paint has the word pain in it. Is it because it was a pain to paint all the pieces because my back started acting up at some point? I don't know, but I really underestimated just how long this whole painting process was gonna take. Once the tear parts were covered, I also covered the black resin parts with black acrylic paint again, because it just gave them such a nice, deep and saturated tone. And of course, the glow in the dark parts can't be missing either. On her hands, it was almost like giving her a nail polish. <laughs> And then I also covered the thighs with paint, teal and glow in the dark resin to make them match with the rest of the doll. And then it was time to prepare the torso piece for the LED. I decided to cover the gaps in the torso with a translucent teal vinyl from the inside, so I cut some shapes I mapped out before from the vinyl with a plotter machine, then weed them out carefully and cover them with a so-called transfer vinyl that will help me to glue them on a non-sticky vinyl afterwards. For easier handling, I cut them apart before sticking them onto a thin transparent vinyl with the help of a squeegee. I can't get over that word, it's so cute! <laughs> squeegee! Once I was done and all the pieces were cut out, I can then take my favorite booger glue and apply the sticky yellow slime all around the edges of the piece before very carefully inserting it into one of the torso pieces and sticking it in place. It was a bit tricky, but it fit quite well, and I was surprised it actually worked this nice. Now I do the same on the front part of the torso with the bigger vinyl piece and try to cover all the gaps for the lights in the torso piece, before doing the same on all necessary parts of the upper torso piece. Before we can start assembling the doll, I still needed to give her some magnets in the wrist joints and hands, so I super glue them in place carefully. It is so satisfying when the magnets fit this perfectly. When gluing magnets, just make sure to not glue them in the wrong way around or the pieces will push away from each other. No, I do not speak from multiple occasions this happened to me. <laughs> all right, we have all the pieces now. Finished painting and ready for assembly. And before we put in the electronics, let's just string the arms and then we can work on the LED stuff. <laughs> I'm scared. So yeah, for easier handling, I wanted to first string the arms, so I take a rubber band with the length of some bandy pliers. Wait, what are these called? Snipe nose pliers. Oh my god, they look like the little doosh! Let me do it for you! <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> I insert the elastic through the armholes first and then simply string all the arm pieces like beads onto a necklace. Before attaching the wrist joints, I secure the ends with sticks. And then I can hook the wrist joints on with some small S-hooks I made from metallic paper clips, remove the stick and have a finished strung arm. 
I just did the same on the other side and her arms are already strung and they look so so cool. I'm really so impressed with the sculpting on this. While I was stringing the doll my partner was so kind to program the LED stripe for me. This little fellow did the programming. <laughs> This looks insane. This is so pretty. Now we just kind of have to figure out how to install this in the doll, but we're gonna make it work. Thank you so much for helping. You're the best. <laughs> Before we can put the stripe into the doll, however, my dad soldered the stripe to a long cable that will be attaching the doll to the Arduino and will be long enough to hide the electronics in the doll stand later. Here we already drilled a hole into the doll bag and the LED stripe will just be a loop inside of the doll torso. Now we wired up the doll with the LED and now I'm going to try to string this. So yeah, stringing the whole thing was not that easy because I had an elastic going through the whole doll body and I somehow had to place the LED strap as well. But I did manage and it wasn't as bad as I feared it would be and I could then string both of the upper legs before securing the elastic with sticks and the help of my boyfriend because the tension of the elastic was really strong. Sadly my camera died here so you will have to wait to see the whole doll body until the big reveal later. <laughs> Let's make her jacket, shall we? I already made a pattern for it and first cut out all the pieces from black cotton fabric. The jacket has some red elements, so I cut out the graphics I made before in Adobe Illustrator with the plotter machine from red fabric vinyl. Then I simply need to weed out the shapes from the red vinyl and also the silver spine for the back of the jacket and the white font that will go onto the long ribbons on the jacket. And then we're ready to iron. Okay, so first I have to iron these red stripes onto some red fabric so the fabric doesn't fail. We have nice red stripes. And then I will put the Zintria on top. With a heating press heated up to 165 degrees Celsius, I then press the fabric vinyl to the red fabric for 20 seconds, peel off the transfer vinyl and then add the white Zentrea font. Press it on again, remove the vinyl and we have two really pretty ribbons. It looks like a face! <laughs> Why is it sad? Let's make it happy. <laughs> After having fun with the prints, I also iron on the red parts on the sleeves and collar of the jacket, peel off the vinyl and end up with some pretty pattern pieces. First we will need to make the pockets on the sleeves, so I take a fabric stripe that I already cleaned up on the side, then glue around the top part of the little pocket bodice piece and then pin the stripe around the bodice of the bag finished sides in before hemming it in place. Turned inside out and ironed in place it looks really neat. Before we can attach the pocket to the sleeve, I need to secure the ribbon with some stitches. Awesome! And now, taking my beloved Uru glue, I apply it to the edges of the pocket and carefully glue it in place on the sleeve. Now just the upper pocket flap is missing. I already prepared it off cam and will now simply glue it in place as well. The pockets on Zentrea's sleeves have some small closures and buckles, so I cut them with my X-Tool M1 from a PVC sheet and paint them with black and teal first. Then taking the little black squares I am attaching a small tiny magnet to the inside like this before gluing the upper part to the pocket flap with some contact glue. To place the lower magnet I stick a second one onto the magnet on the pocket flap, apply some glue and then press it down to the back of the pocket. Now we have to place the black ribbons on the jacket. I cut them from some pleather and place them onto the sleeves like this and will secure them with a couple of stitches on the seam allowance. And then taking the teal buckles I gloss them with glow in the dark resin as well and carefully glue them on top of the stripes like this. Let's also prepare the collar. First I glue around the upper seam allowance with my Uhu Alice Kleber. And then I attach some small belt loops with some black ribbon I had still laying around. I don't want visible seams so I glue them. And now we can finally take the bodice of the jacket and first attach the collar to it. Awesome! Before sewing in the sleeves I will iron on the print on the back of the jacket and will simply use my regular iron for that. Okay, I'm gonna iron this on now with my regular iron. Like this. And hope it works. It actually worked fantastic, so I can now sew on those big sleeves onto the jacket, finished sides in. Awesome! Let's also fast forward to the finished sleeve and side seams. It looks so nice already. I also glued around all seams of the jacket already, so we can now attach a zipper to the front as well. This time it's not a working one because the jacket is not closable because of Zen's big personality. <laughs> 
Zen's jacket has shoulder pads, so let's make these next. I decided to cut the pattern from some EVA foam and first apply some contact adhesive to the seam lines that I need to glue together. After waiting a couple minutes for the adhesive to dry, I then carefully glued together the seams as neat as I can. To cover up any gaps in the seams, I decided to fill them with some quick seal or in my case simply acrylic from the hardware store. And when that was dry, I apply contact cement on both pieces so I can glue them on top of each other faster than I wanted to. <laughs> oh no, not so fast here. It worked out eventually though, so that I then can take my soldering iron to burn some lines into the foam to give the shoulder pads some more dimension. It worked like a charm and it looks really cool I think. Instead of plastic dipping the foam pieces this time, I decided to use some soft UV resin to seal them off. This way they will stay flexible but also have a nice smooth surface for the paint job later. After curing they look like this and are now ready to paint. I first use my Posca marker again to paint all the tear parts before going in with black acrylic paint to paint the remaining parts with it. And for the finishing touches I also use the glow in the dark resin mix on the teal parts again. Last thing to make are the little collar belts. I already cut them in shape from pleather and now simply insert them into the belt loops of the collar and secure them on the back with some Uhu glue. Then I just paint the little teal shapes onto it in the front and then use some magnets to attach the shoulder pads to the jacket. This way the jacket will be easier to take on and off because the shoulder pads are quite stiff and in the way, but this way it makes it a lot easier. And with that the jacket is finally done and I'm honestly so proud of how it turned out. A friend of mine said it looks like a real human sized jacket and I'm happy it seems to have turned out this nice. Okay, time to make one of the most challenging things for this doll, the helmet with the screen. And let's start by trying to make a visor. Okay, so Andrea's helmet has this visor and in order to make that I want to vacuum form plastic and for that I kind of have to build a vacuum box. So I asked my dad and he was down to try it because he likes tinkering with things. So let's build that box and make a test. Okay, let's go. In order to build the vacuum boy, <laughs> I wrote vacuum boy. <laughs> so in order to make the vacuum box, I first laser cut the top of it from some plywood and put in a bunch of air holes. It's done! It turned out perfect, I just need to remove all the little stuck parts from the holes. Meanwhile my dad started sawing the rest of the parts for the box from some foam board leftovers. He also drilled a hole for the vacuum cleaner to attach later on and then started gluing the box together with epoxy glue. When the box was assembled and dried, we then screwed the top plate with the air holes on top of it. Now I just needed to laser cut two frames for inserting the PETG sheets later on and cut these again from some plywood because the temperatures won't be too high later for the wood to catch fire. This is how the frames look like after lasering and here is also the finished box. To hold the frames together later, I will use some metallic office clips. Okay, so we have the vacuum forming thing that we built, the little box and the frame. And I already put in the little PVC sheet and we're gonna heat it in the oven now and then hopefully make a vacuum thing. Oh, I haven't shown you the visor. Let me get that. Okay, so this is the visor. I already primed and sanded it so it's nice and smooth. And yeah, let's see if we can make this work. Oh my god, I'm so scared that this is not gonna work out and that I have a problem. Ah! After we put the plastic in the oven and it started to bend down like this, it was time to take it out, turn on the vacuum cleaner and vacuum form the whole thing. And it freaking worked! I screamed in happiness. <laughs> In the end I ended up making a couple of visors because I still needed to tint them black which was another thing I never tried before and I was scared to mess it up. For the tinting process I got some eye dye poly synthetic dye in black, throw it into a pot, pour boiling water on it and stir it until the bag is dissolved. I made a couple more but this is a trial so let's see if this works. So yeah, I carefully dunked the visor into the water when it was cooled down just a tiny bit and yes, you can see in here, it actually worked. It works. <sighs> nice. Here's the difference of the tinted visor versus the clear one from before. It's so cool, yay! I now just have to cut off all the excess and wait for the final pieces to print on my Saturn printer so we can build the helmet. With the pieces cleaned up, I then also paint them the same way as I did on the body. 
First adding the teal parts, then painting everything black and finally finishing up the pieces with the glow in the dark UV resin mix. And then I can finally attach the visor to the front of the helmet and carefully glue it in place with a small amount of hot glue. And then it's just the backside of the helmet that also needs some painting love as well. To make the screen, my boyfriend was so kind and made all the image files in Adobe Illustrator and then animated them with the help of his programmer friend with an Arduino Uno R3. It's a running animation because more would have been extremely difficult to do in the short amount of time I had for the doll, but I think it is absolutely amazing. To attach the screen to the head, I first glue a little cardboard to the back of it and then attach a small plastic pipe that ends in a magnet to it. The second magnet will be attached to the head back of the doll. That also means that you have to take off the face and hair to showcase the screen with the helmet, but I think that's fine since you can't see Zen's face through the helmet anyways. I then just need to plug all the cables of the screen together with the longer cables that will be hooked up to the Arduino later, and then it's time to make the last thing for this project because we need a case to put in all the electronics, right? So let's make a doll stand that is also a box. I first laser cut the shapes for the lid from red and black acrylic sheets. You ready for some peel off ASMR? I will place them on top of each other like this and didn't even recognize my very beautiful reflection in the black acrylic. I then used some double faced tape to bond these two acrylic sheets together. And then I cut some eyes from self-adhesive teal vinyl and will attach them to the doll stand as well. To make the actual box, my dad and I will cut four frames in total from foam board with my dad's milling machine that we then stack onto each other in order to build a box. My dad built the box without letting me know, so I couldn't film it, but as you can see, the electronics all fit in it and it looks really nice. To attach the lid, I will glue some magnets into the frame of the box and also onto the lid. I then realized that the hole in the lid was a little bit too big for the doll stand rod, so I decided to use some of the plastic pipe again as kind of a plug and attach everything with hot glue. That worked nice! Now we only need to cover up the rough sides of the box and for that we cut some stripes from black cardstock that we will simply glue around the edge of the box. To do that I will use some contact cement again and apply it all over the cardstock stripe and also onto the edge of the box. And when the glue had dried a little I then carefully glue the stripe onto the box. And with that the doll stand box is done and I'm really glad how it turned out. This way, I will be able to hide all the electronic parts for the doll. Well, except for the cables, but that's fine. Zen is a cyborg after all, so I think the technical aspect will be really cool. And yeah, now I just have to wire up the last final cables to the Arduino boards for the LED and screen. And with that, this project is finally done. <laughs> Let me present to you Zentrea. After a combined 250 hours of work from Blue and me, she is finally done. <laughs> and I'm ready for a three day nap now. <laughs> thank you so much Blue for working on this doll together with me. And also thank you so, so much to my dad and my boyfriend for helping me with all the technical stuff. <laughs> and as always, a special thanks goes out to my patrons for the continuous support. You guys are amazing and make all of this possible. All right, I'm in bed now for the next three days. So see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.